I have a move to approve. I'll make the move to approve. Okay. Tom. Second. I'll, I'll second Tom's motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We've moved to approve and the motion is passed for the. Hey, uh, Steve. You yes. do have uh, some members of the public that are on now. So just as a reminder, if they want to make comment to uh, use the raise hand feature. Oh, okay. Um, there's two attendees. Is that what I'm looking at here? Yeah, one of those is actually uh, Tom calling in. Um, oh, is Tom uh, 8291? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so just a reminder to uh, do you. Uh, I could make the uh, the announcement right now. Oh no, no, no! Just a reminder. You already did all that. Just a reminder on each yeah. agenda item to ask for public comment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. I didn't know we had pub public involved here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just joining. Okay. Very good. All right. Let's move on to. Um, uh, the upcoming commissioner term expirations and appointment opportunities. Yeah, I could speak to that um, quickly. Uh, I gave you in the staff report, so two of you, your terms are coming to a close. That would be you, Steve Farak, and Tom Ellsbury. Uh, your terms are both coming to a close. I have put out um, some announcements, uh, you know, via social media. It's on our website. It's uh, posted to our bulletin board out front. Um, so I, there's still a few days for some other uh, members of the public who might want to uh, request to be appointed to the commission. Um, obviously, uh, you know, current commissioners are uh, allowed and encouraged, uh, if you so desire, to request to be reappointed. It's a simple process. Just uh, if you could uh, send me an email just uh, simply stating your desire to be reappointed. Um, the only trick is I ask to receive that by Thursday uh, because I will be posting the agenda for the board on Friday and they will make their appointments at their meeting on November 10th. Okay. So, just a simple email is all I need um, if you're a current commissioner. Um, and you can see in the thing uh, what we're asking for of people who uh, have not currently served. You can add more if you would like. You're more than welcome to. Uh, but um, it, it, given the time constraint, I, just a simple uh, notice that you wish to be reappointed. And uh, obviously, in my position, I hope both of you uh, will strongly consider staying on the commission. Okay, well, thank you. I, I intend to as, as of this moment, so. Eric, I see that. And, I, and I, thank, I, I thank you as well. You're very <laughs> welcome. This is, this is Eric, Tom, I, see I thank we have you a, as well. A, a couple of open positions. Uh, certainly, I personally heard about these position, you know, four years ago, uh, I think it was, from the CERT mailing list. I don't know if they, they have been broadcasting this this time around? You know, CERT, the local CERT has kind of gone a little defunct um, and have not been meeting or uh, putting out any materials recently. Um, a lot of our uh, local Lions Club members are obviously on mm -hmm. our mailing lists. Uh, and then I did put it out through next door. I put it out on our, it went out on our Facebook page. Um, we have tried hard to broadcast it out. Um, getting people to uh, uh, come into these positions can be tricky, and there's no better way than personal references and personal requests to join. And I've been talking to some people who I thought would be good. Um, time will tell if they submit anything or not. And this is just kind of the standard feature. Um, just to be clear, when we have open positions, we will take letters of interest at any at any point in time and i can always put them in front of the board to be appointed um, and we've had open positions now for a little while so by all means talk to people and uh 
if they miss this deadline, it doesn't mean that we can't put something uh, in front of the board for December to still be effective in January <laughs> by any stretch, assuming we have open positions. These are just uh, the timing within the bylaws of our kind of annual recruitment uh, and reappointment push. Okay. And it's hard yeah. right now to ask anybody to take anything extra on during the pandemic. I mean, most people are just feeling slightly overwhelmed, so. It's understandable. Yes, it's true. Okay. All right, so I believe we reviewed that. And uh, the next item on the list. Public comment. Uh, oh, public comment on that, uh, on the upcoming commissioner term, expirations and appointment opportunities. Okay, you have none, you're good to go. Okay, then we'll move on to the Chief officer's report and uh, chief, I leave it to you. Go ahead and do your thing. You're muted, chief. Chief, you're muted. Sorry, there you go. There we are. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for uh, joining us on the election evening and um, <clears throat> Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to give you some updates on current activities here in Linwood and in San Rafael, and also to a greater degree in Marin County as we look at election night. Um, I'm not sure if that's me giving feedback or someone else. Can anyone else hear that? Almost sounds like Darth Vader in the background. And that might be wrong, perhaps. I'm, you know, Darth Vader, I'm thinking wrong. I I, I think it was somebody who had their self unmuted. So just keep going, Chief. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure I was not competing with something you guys couldn't hear me. So that being said, I'll start with the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority and vegetation management effort. Um, as of just a few days ago, the NCCC crews we welcomed in here from um, St. Louis and from Sacramento. Had a chance to meet with a lot of the individuals firsthand this time. Uh, they come from all across the country, uh, Missouri, Los Angeles, uh, Massachusetts, uh, you name it, they're, they're from a variety of areas, um, and it looks like a very enthusiastic and energetic team of young individuals who are coming into our communities to provide us with really invaluable assistance. Um, I'm happy to announce even further that a third team is going to arrive right around the time this team may be departing. Um, in sometime in December. And so with that, uh, they're going to continue those efforts well beyond what we expected to continue to draw down risk in our communities. Um, there's uh, opportunity, I included a link and also uh, an email address for those who may need some supplemental assistance with the assistance of the AmeriCorps and NCCC crews to actually reach out and connect to learn more about what services are provided and or place a request directly with our vegetation management personnel so that they could get someone else to come out and, and assess their circumstances and perhaps schedule the assistance that may be needed um, from those individuals. So please share that information so that we can make full use of these individuals while they're here over the next couple of months. Hey, Chief, um, before you move on, if uh, your veg management team has put together like even just a little one page flyer about this or anything and they could send that to me uh, and I'm happy to talk to them about it tomorrow when we meet. Um, but I'm happy to, you know, I, I can blast that out through our next door account and put it on our uh, social media as well. Oh, that's great. I appreciate that. I'll make sure I follow up tomorrow morning with uh, Sean and Quinn on that. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, in addition, we're looking at hiring. Um, up to three or four vegetation management uh, specialists. Those individuals will be working as fixed term employees. They'll be working year round as opposed to just seasonal. Um, out of our six seasonal and vegetation uh, defensible space inspectors rather, we lost three of them for various reasons during the course of the last couple of months. And so everyone had a valid reason, but unfortunately as temporary employees, that's the risk you start to run. And so. We move forward with the hiring of vegetation management specialists who are able to conduct same or similar work, but here be around year round to continue the effort of drawing down risk in our community. So we're really expecting these individuals to um, 
really produce a lot more than we were able to get just with the, the temporary uh, seasonal hires. So that's just added information that was not in the report. We've um, vetted three of the four individuals and the conditional job offer went out to the fourth individual the day before yesterday. Pardon Chief, me. Chief, will yeah. these be fully benefited uh, uh, in positions? I don't think they're fully benefited, but I think they do have some limited benefits. Um, for instance, I think they get vacation leave and they may get some, some accrual of sick leave and maybe some form of medical, but I don't think they're fully benefited individuals, even though that almost sounds like full benefits. Right, right, all right, thank you. Absolutely. Um, Civic Gas and Electric, as we all know, they've had the recent um, public safety power shutdowns. I understand there may have been minimal to very few individuals in the Marinwood and or San Rafael communities who may have been impact, impacted by those shutdowns. Um, that was really, really encouraging to see that we were, we were not targeted for a shutdown. So I'm, I'm wondering moving forward if that's a good sign for us as we look at our preparedness, the, the things we're doing to draw down risk combined with their ability to microgrid areas that they used to not have the capability of microgridding. And so uh, with that, I'm hoping that moving forward, we'll see fewer and fewer of the PSPS events affecting our community. COVID, uh, just quick summary there. Um, thankfully here in California and especially in the North Bay and here in the Bay Area, it seems like the cases are trending downward as a result. The governor has looked at lowering our tier from purple down to orange. And with that, we're able to actually resume more normal function than we had been and, and increase capacity in those areas where we had seen limited um, access and or ability for others to co-locate in the same space. And so with that, um, I'm really hopeful that they're gonna do a great job of monitoring how this affects businesses and how it affects the health and well-being of everyone moving forward. Uh, and I say I'm concerned about this primarily because I'm watching where reopening has happened in other countries and in other places around the country um, where they're seeing an increase in cases. And I, I, I heard a report recently of upwards of two dozen states in the U.S. alone are seeing a, a significant increase in cases again. And so I don't know if that is attributed to lack of social distancing, lack of face protection, or all of the above. I'm, I'm not really sure, but um, we're keeping an eye on it. And so far things are trending in the right direction for us. So with that, the deaths seem to be holding at a, at a fairly stable level compared to what they were the first few months into the pandemic. Um, the cases nationwide continue to increase. And as of last week, we're at nearly 9 million cases. And we may have crossed that threshold already in the country. So, um, not quite a quarter of a million deaths, but still substantial numbers of, of persons who passed on in, the, in nationwide. And then in the state of California, closer to 18,000 deaths now at this point. So we're really hoping that um, those vaccines that were seeming like for whatever reason, they were problematic just a few weeks ago, hopefully they're back on track with, with the testing and trials and maybe we have something promising in the spring if we're fortunate, we'll see. Um, the next one is the one, the topic of interest there is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Um, funding from the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority was used by FireSafe Marin to purchase 1000 Midland WR120 NOAA radios. And those weather radios are really gonna be used for a pilot program to test the effectiveness of the radios as a backup system to wireless emergency alerts and um, other, how should we say, alert notification processes within the county. And so residents who receive these radios are gonna be requested and encouraged to place the radios directly in their master bedroom and plug them into the wall and leave them on. They said if the power fails, the backup batteries will be sufficient enough to make sure that those um, radios will still be able to receive and transmit the radio messages in an emergency. And so with that, it's, um, it's important that people recognize that the tone is loud on purpose by design and intent it wants to make sure it even gets to the deeper sleepers like I can be sometimes when I'm fatigued. So I'm hoping to have one of these radios one of these days myself. I don't know that I'm necessarily in need of it where I live, but I'd still like to know that, you know, if something's going on in Marin or Marinwood or in San Rafael, I'm well aware of it, not relying on some other uh, means of information to get the, the word to me. So. That being said, um, 
the NLAA only uses the radio very sparingly when they have an actual true emergency so that they're not um, impacting people's rest or getting them conditioned improperly to the use of the radio so that they're waking them up or, or sending out an alert when it's something like a fire watch or something along the lines of a red flag warning or a, um, a storm watch or some other indication of current conditions. They want to ensure that you're actually getting the broadcast for a true, true emergency, not an advisory or something lesser than a true emergency or an evacuation order, as an example. So they, um, <clears throat> they're doing their due diligence to make sure that they're not pushing information out that otherwise could be received from other sources. Um, again, the value of these radios is that if you do lose power at home and you do not have the ability for your cell phone to work because the towers have gone down or landlines, uh, well, not a lot of people use landlines anymore, but that's even still a possibility you can lose connectivity with your landline, I understand, because AT&T and some of the other providers don't necessarily maintain those landlines the way they used to. Um, but if you start getting your power lines and, and other things of PSPS take place, as an, as an example, this is gonna be a reliable way for people to get information that they otherwise may not have been able to receive it. And so um, it, it's really important that we start looking at the value of these radios and, and hopefully get the opportunity to see them actually work at some point, either on a trial basis so that we have confidence in them. And then later on, well, let's re retract that one. No, not later on. I don't want them to actually ever have to work because that means something went wrong. But if they need to work, we wanna be assured that they will. So. Um, so with that, is there any questions regarding the NOAA radios? How are they selecting who's going to have them for the trial program? You know, there was information that was communicated, um, and I believe they went based on um, population within the communities in the district, and they only had so many. So Marinwood, I believe, as an example, re received around 16 to 17 radios. Um, I think the numbers are fairly well balanced from what I understand, but um, I would imagine that there's going to be more radios on the horizon. I just can't say when. And, and there are $30. Um, and so one question I had, I guess, uh, last month by email is uh, if somebody could confirm the code for people who buy their own and who want to set it up. Um, just investigating a little bit, you know how website it looks like it's code 006041 but any sort of confirmation who for people who buy their own would be useful yeah i can certainly look in to find out a little bit more about what the, the potential is and maybe whether or not there for instance there's a group of individuals who want to purchase radios can there be a volume discount that would be helpful also yeah i mean it, they're just not very expensive they're on amazon like i think you know people in tornado alley have those very routinely this is a very well established technology i think what's new is expanding it from tornadoes to wildfire areas. Right. right. Uh, uh, yes. If I could, Chief, if you don't mind. So this is what the radios are. Um, the, you know, just a small little box. They, they come pre-programmed. I believe they have batteries installed already as well. Um, we did get 16 of them. I have them. Given this commission's interest, uh, my intention, unless anybody uh, personally objects, was I was going to provide one of these to each commissioner. So that way you can all be part of the pilot, keeping in mind that anybody who is participating in the pilot also will need, uh, I will be submitting your name and some basic contact information to Fire Safe Marin, who's coordinating this with MWPA, because they're asking that we record who these have gone out to, and there may be some subsequent, you know, again, this is a pilot project. So I assume they will have some subsequent questions, uh, survey type things to send out. So uh, I will personally, you know, deliver and drop these off to everybody, or if you want to make arrangements with me to come pick one up, um, I'm pretty sure I know where everybody lives and it'll take me all of about six minutes to do a quick circle around uh, the neighborhood here. Uh, of which I drive past on my way to and from my own home. So that's pretty easy for me to handle. Um, I will have these, I will get them out uh, between the chief or myself. We can figure out what the exact uh, code is or frequency or uh, whatever it is that you're supposed to plug in. Uh, but these should be pre-programmed and ready to go. Now that's odd because the boxes they sent me are sealed. So I'm not sure how they did that. But that's 
they say. Um, that will leave us with a, uh, a couple few extras. I'll take one and agree to participate in the pilot as well. I, one of their concerns is making sure that they get enough people countywide to participate in the pilot so they can get some uh, valid uh, and statistically significant feedback. Do you want us to reach out to people? Uh, let me see how many exactly I'll have left, and we'll, you know, probably just come up with. Uh, I'll put something out, um, and then just handle it maybe on a first come, first serve basis until uh, we've allocated them out. Okay. Yeah, I literally just got these earlier in the week, so. Nice. Are Are they going to do any a, a testing? You know, like on certain days or something. I don't believe so. I I think they want they they don't want the uh, they, they, when the noise sounds, they want you to know that it's for real and it's not a test. So I don't think they send out a lot of tests through this, Steve, to be quite honest no. with you. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that's right. And so the test weekly really at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 2 a.m. in the morning, yes. When we're watching the baby, okay. <laughs> Uh, is there anybody, I, uh, Eric asked if anybody is not, uh, is opposed to it or um, is anybody opposed to getting a radio? Um, how about? If somebody it? else wants one and there isn't enough, I'm happy to leave mine on the table, but yeah, otherwise I, I'll take it. Yeah. And somehow, uh, Tom, you've been muted again and I cannot unmute you. So if you can dial star six, that'll allow us to hear you, Tom. I don't know if you heard me there or not, but like I said, I cannot unmute you. So for Tom Ellsbury, I need you to push star six on your phone so you can unmute. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, uh, so I, I second, um, uh, sorry, uh, we're talking about the radios. So yeah, I second that and, and likewise, if, if they run out, I'll happily, you know, drop off a couple at, uh, at Eric's uh, Eric's desk, um, since I do agree that we shouldn't get preferential treatment. I think we do need people, and we are all probably going to volunteer because we're interested in this. Yeah. But I think there's a fine line with this, preferential treatment, which I don't know, I don't know if I call this treatment costs. preferential or not. You seem to <laughs> <laughs> this is Tom. Am I, am I unmuted? Yes, yes Tom, Tom. We can hear you now. Thank you. Uh, I, I, yeah. I am. Yeah, I would like to have. Uh, a box. Yeah, no problem. When I talked to Fire Safe Marin originally and I told them what our intention was and I told them that our fire commission had actually been talking about this for uh, several months now, they were actually very excited to have the fire commission as a body join part of the pilot. So I don't I don't see this as a preferential. I actually see this as a uh, valid way for them to get some reliable, consistent uh, feedback. I think this is really useful, guys. Uh, I, yeah. I've probably mentioned this in the past, but I have organized in the past wildfire resilience programs uh, with people from the state and, and fire departments. And the question of how do we get people alerted in the middle of the night when everybody's phone is set to ignore is was just a really difficult one. Uh, and there wasn't a very good answer at the time. Uh, and I think seeing that program, which again, traditionally I always associated with the tornado alerts, expand to wildfire country is fantastic and i think we'll save lives yeah I, I i agree and i think i i know we went through a whole siren thing and we and we brought in samples and we also uh, talked about them extensively and after hearing the, the difference between the two i've i've moved over to the the NOAA side of the radios to uh, be more specific and more di uh, directed toward the goal of getting people out in a, in a, in an orderly fashion. So. so, so point of ignorance here and maybe everyone else knows and I don't, but once the radio goes off at two in the morning, what am I expected to do with that information? Am I to go bang on doors, in my neighborhood, raise the alarm type of thing? Well, first off, I'd just like to clarify, Greg, that we all do know that you are ignorant, so you don't Thanks. need to make a point about it, all right? Uh, that point's been made. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> nah, but, but he Greg looks knows, younger, doesn't he? Greg knows I love him. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's all a good point. I mean, I, I don't have an answer. The chief probably would be a better person to speak to that. 
I imagine at some point there was some, uh, maybe some training would come with the radio as to w once the alert came through, uh, what our next move might be. I'm not, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. I'll go with yeah. the that they're probably looking at the value of our wise communities and other neighborhood CERT programs and otherwise where individuals have these radios, if they're not widely distributed, that they'll be the lead point to make notifications um, as quickly as possible within their neighborhoods. And then hopefully tell one, one tells two, two tell four, four tell eight, and you know that one individual doesn't have to be the sole individual to rely on. But those are conversations that are going to need to take place within those organizations and within neighborhoods as well. So, so phone trees? I'm sorry? Phone trees? Is that what those are, phone trees? Yeah, that's, that's, I like the concept. I was thinking more like a pyramid. It started with one and it just built indefinitely moving forward. But same, same premise, same look. Yeah, my understanding is that the way Mr. This Chairman? Is using, yes, sir. In, in, Go ahead, Tom. I've been uh, muted about six or seven times during this meeting. Just, just so you're aware of that. I want to participate, but uh, I've been muted. You, you should so be good I, to go uh, now, Tom. Yeah, go, go okay. ahead, Tom. Yeah, while well, we got you. I hear you. All right, go ahead. Go ahead and say what you what you want to say, because we'll we'll wait on you. Well, I, I said before I would really like to have one of those radios. Okay, I think. It. You got it. All right. I will make sure you get one, Tom. Hey, thank you. Yeah. As, hey, Tom. Yes. As long as we're still commissioners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta re. You gotta reapply. <laughs> you, you need to well, sign up for another know, two years. I, I've so been with the about fire department. I've been with the fire department since I, I think 1974 or 75. So, um, you know, I, I'm going to go for another two years. Attaboy. <laughs> good, good for you. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I have to remember one thing. Uh, I have not taken any vacation. So when it's time for me to retire, I'm going to go back to Switzerland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sounds like a good place to go. Yeah, right. it is. If you like the, the, the snow. Lovely. Yeah. The cold and the snow. So, High mountains. No, I go, in, I go in the springtime. Look at the beautiful cows and the nice cheese, and it's just wonderful. We have family yeah. there. Oh, okay. Nice. Very nice. So, yes, I would be honored if you would accept me for another year, two years. Yes, I'll follow up with you offline, Tom, uh, on how to uh, make sure I get an email or something in writing from you that I can uh, present to the board. No, I can do that. No problem. Excellent. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Um, so, so at this point, we have th three ways of um, getting notified. Uh, Marin Alert, Nixle, and now the NOAA radios, if somebody has one. So I think I think we're I think we're doing good. I want to I want to thank everybody for their uh, effort and uh, their work put into this. And um, I, I think we're moving along pretty good myself personally. Well, thank the voters who approved Measure C. Yeah. Created the Wildfire Prevention Authority. Well, thank you, voters. <laughs> Hopefully, the voters do the right thing tonight too. Yeah. Right. Chief, <laughs> Me as uh, well. you got anything else? Uh, just the last two things, actually. One was uh, no emergency incidents to report for the month. So that's a great thing. Um, I always say if we have too much to report, that means there's been too much destruction, and that's not what we want to see, even though that's what we're here for. Um, and then lastly, there's election preparedness. And I mentioned uh, earlier that the um, in anticipation of potential demonstrations or protests or even unrest, the um, San Rafael, Marinwood, Marin County Fire Chiefs Association, all departments have all passed incident action plans in an effort to prepare for the potential unrest that we anticipate could occur. And so with that, um, the Marin County's Emergency Operations Center and San Rafael's EOC have been partially activated. 
They're not currently staffed right now, but the Marin County Sheriff's Office has up staff today with upwards of 20 different resources in place until approximately 11 p.m. tonight. Um, our EOC and our incident action plans are going to be updated daily as we move forward over the next several days and as the election results and any, um, uh, how should we say, demonstrations or activity afterwards occur, we'll still be prepared to provide a response and or um, mitigation for anything that may occur on a, a wide scale or even a, a smaller scale basis. And so I think it's very helpful that there's been some things happened over the course of 2020 here in the county that, that kind of made this something that I think the chief officer saw value in, um, given the fact that it's unpredictable now. You don't really know where you're going to find some protests or challenges. Um, this coming weekend, as we, from what I understand, there's a protest that's going to take place for a couple of hours, and they're going to be on the Golden Gate Bridge, which could impact traffic. And my concern is you could have a splinter group going impact traffic to the San Rafael Bridge as well. I've seen that very situation happen on two separate highways simultaneously um, during my time in Oakland. So I just to have a plan, to have a, a alternate plan if you have to transport patients who are in critical situations and you can't use the bridges, will we use helo flights, helicopters, will we use um, our, our water-based vessels to get where we need to go, whatever the plan is, or whether we drive further to the North Bay, I wanted to make sure our staff were thinking about those things so that we'd be prepared in the event something were to occur and we weren't quite planning on it. Well, in fact, we had planned on it. And so that's... That's what I have for the conclusion of my report. I'm sorry. Um, our incidents, our total response time are curiously back to the exact numbers that I saw a few months ago, which have me again questioning are our, mem are our members just driving at the same speed and getting out the door at the same time and getting to their locations at the same exact time, day in, day out. This is just kind of unbelievable to me. I've never seen data generated it's almost identical month after month. And so um, I'm almost curious enough to have somebody else run a separate report with a separate set, uh, software to see whether or not we get the same data. Um, but all that to say is we're coming into our response times in excellent time. We're getting on scene in excellent time. And so I don't want to discourage what we're doing, but I just want to investigate it a little bit further. Chief, ask you to comment on... Uh, Thank you. Marine Woods Fire Captain Ryan Brackett's uh, application to be a strike team leader. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm just, there's some stuff here I'm not familiar with. I see. Well, basically, um, individuals have an opportunity to work as a firefighter or an engine boss where they run the actual engine company that is assigned to a strike team deployment. Um, in the case of a strike team leader, this is where an individual is now taking the group of resources from multiple agencies in most cases upwards of five to seven resources and responding out as a group. And this individual, Captain Brackett, would be the leader of this task force. Um, and that would usually comprise of anywhere of, uh, you could say 15 to roughly 30 individuals who may be going out on a response together. And so he's responsible for providing the direction, for providing for their safety, for actually accounting for everything related to that incident when it comes to things that are fiscal in nature, but things that are certainly tactical and strategic uh, and, and functional in nature. So it's a, it's a great responsibility. I think um, the, the folks that I know who've been out as strike team leaders or as strike team leader trainees, um, they're excited about it because they get a chance to really use their experience and knowledge to influence firefighting out in the field. And so um, with that, oftentimes you'll see that it's a battalion chief are hired as the task force leader. But in this case, uh, I'm willing to certainly support an experienced captain, which Captain Brackett has been out, you know, roughly like I don't know, at least 18, 20 times, from what I understand, and has a, or a substantial amount of experience that he could put into play for becoming a trainee and eventual task force leader. So um, while sometimes it's been rank driven, I think in some cases they may make allowances as in a unique dynamic here in Marinwood. So I'm hopeful that in time, he may be afforded the opportunity, but I also need to have some conversation with Captain Brackett and um, District Manager Dreykelson and myself will have some conversations about things that we have in the way of expectations and or um, deliverables as well. 
Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, thank however, you that much. ends up, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chief, for your, uh, your as usual, good report. Um, do we have any comments or questions from any of the commissioners regarding the Chief's report? I just want to thank Chief for uh, generally the ability to uh, have Marinwood firefighters respond to more wildfires than perhaps in the past. Uh, being able to rely on San Rafael as much as Marinwood does uh, is enabling those men to to go and out in the fields for days at a time. And I think that for a place as wooded as Marinwood, uh, that's fantastic experience. And I know we'll benefit from the San Rafael firefighters experience as well. Uh, so whether Captain Brackett gets the position or not, I think the fact that he has accumulated that wildfire experience is, is fantastic. So thank you, Chief. Yeah, I agree. Uh, thank you. I, I continue to support it. I was Chief Gray did it for me, and I'm assuming um, the, the other Chiefs prior to them. I, it, in most cases, we, we'd have to really know the value of wildland firefighting to support it. And I'd, I'd be really surprised if a modern-day California fire chief was not supportive of uh, his or her uh, members' efforts to try to learn more and do better in this environment. But thank you. Okay. Chief, this is, uh, oh, go ahead, Tom. Uh, yes, uh, I, I would like to thank Chief, and I am looking forward to uh, meeting you someday. Thank you, sir. I look forward to meeting you as well. All right. Uh, any more thank comments? Uh, we'll go. We'll go to the uh, public comment on the chief's report. Any public comment? Eric, anything? Oh, no, you're good. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, item number seven, which is commissioners with quest for future agenda items. Do any of the commissioners have any uh, requests for future agenda items at this time? None here. I All have right. no request, Tom. Thank you. All right, so then why don't we Thank go you. All right. Uh, any final comments by anyone before we uh, go ahead and adjourn the meeting? I move, we adjourn. No comments. All right. Siobhan, do you have a, a request? Oh, just if you haven't I, I voted, please go vote. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, then, uh, I move to adjourn me. I second that. And I thank all of you for being here. All right, and uh, therefore I thank everybody for being here today and uh, I guess so everybody's excited about watching their television or listening to the radios and and seeing what uh, what's up what's in the future for us all so all right. I'll follow up uh, with both you uh, Steve and Tom regarding reappointment and I'll also send something out to the commission regarding the NOAA radios thank you very much Eric Great. appreciate your work okay I will send you an email excellent Just thank you I will too. You're Sir, welcome. Consider yourselves followed up. All right. Stay <laughs> safe and healthy, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night everybody. Yes. Have a safe and happy Please, please stay safe. I don't see you until next month. Mm, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right.